This water may be murky, but to a small group of scientists and volunteers, the mission is clear. So this can be envisioned as an underwater reforestation project, but for a very special ecosystem that we have right here off the coast of Nova Scotia and the Maritimes. It's a bit of a, a treasure, a secret treasure. Not a lot of people know about it. To the untrained eye, eelgrass might look like most seaweed. Just stuff that gets caught in your toes at the beach. But this green plant, well little, is a big deal. So it protects our coasts from erosion, it's good for water quality, and also it stores our emissions. So it's a, it's a secret weapon in our fight for climate change. They say eelgrass is more effective at collecting and storing carbon than trees. These scientists consider it a frontline defense against climate change. How does this one look compared to the other ones? So when you see it, all your trees around you, you recognize how important they are. But then when you come to the ocean, you kind of don't think about this. And so eelgrass is growing always. And when you see it, like all these green areas, extremely important wherever you are. But eelgrass is disappearing. Certain invasive species like to eat it. And changing temperatures are affecting its growth. That's why this group from Dalhousie and the Ecology Action Center are out here trying to find the best way of replanting it. First, the grass is harvested at one location, and then it's brought to a second location for planting. The group is trying multiple methods of restoring the eelgrass. So we planted uh, individual seeds, and we planted seeds in little biodegradable um, burlap bags. And they are already in there right behind me. And today we're going to plant uh, sods. They're in the cold, muddy water until 6 in the evening, making sure the eelgrass gets in the ground. Everything has a bit of a different uh, difficulty, and uh, the effort we need to put into it is, is, um, varies widely. If any of these methods are effective, they'll be helping to fight climate change and increase biodiversity. They say they're already seeing some results. Every time we're snorkeling, we see little critters swimming along in there. We see crabs and lobsters, and those are super beneficial to our local fisheries. <laughs> Heavy. So hopefully by yeah, early spring or early summer next year, we will see which method worked best, and then hopefully can grow this project. The group hopes to connect with communities and find volunteers. Their ultimate goal, to turn Nova Scotia into an eelgrass restoration hub. Adam Innes, CBC News, Halifax.